Okay, I am back with part two. Um, I should go hopefully longer this time. I died in part one because uh, I made a stupid move. I've actually played this uh, once before, and I wouldn't say I got far, but I did make progress. Um, let me turn my mic down a second. Okay. Um, okay, and I just wanted to say also if you hear me mute out, uh, then I'm probably hitting mute to cough or something and save you from from that annoyance. All right, so we are back. Hang on one second, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, uh, we're back. What happened so far is we are a courier uh, coming to this guy, Igor Sitzer's house to pick up a package, is at least what we've been sent to do. Um, and uh, in part one, you'll hear the kind of stuff that Igor starts talking about. Um, but this last line here, I'll start from here, sits there's toys with the package on his desk, thus silently indicating through gangster etiquette that it's okay to bring up the entire point of your visit. Alright, so talk to Igor, package, yeah, not going to be a package for you today, Vest, that's not at all why you're here, more to do with fate than anything else. Look, Igor, the sooner I can get back to reading the new People magazine and craving oblivion, the better this day will be. Let's ask him about fate. Surely you know the old tale. Sitzers throws his head back and laughs. You hear his chins unwind and compress like a carton accordion. He mimes flipping through a stack of several bills close to his ear. He doesn't do the sound, ho. The important part for you, Vest, is that the threads of fate all got snipped at the end. Sitzer starts the long, slow process of evacuating his chair of his person. He's never even remotely expressed a desire to leave it in all the time you've known him. The smell of the cauldron takes on an even worse stench with the stress in the air. It wouldn't take much for you to begin delivering goulash down Rainbow Street, if you're following. Alright, so at this point, I'm going to open the bottle. Opened. Inside the bottle is the Safeway brand discount Worcester sauce. Alright, so what happened last time is that his dog named Puzzle... I think it's because it's actually a hybrid of a dog and a bear. Um, attacked me and killed me. Uh, so I'm going to try and feed him this Worcestershire sauce. Give sauce to Puzzle. Okay, first taking the Safeway sauce, taken. Sisters gives up trying to get out of his chair after all. Gut check time vest, he says. Puzzle, sick him. Puzzle totally refuses. Puzzle looks you up and down as best he can. His oversized neck muscles frustrate, moving the entire 180 degrees. Um, so did I give it to him? It just says taken. Give sauce to Puzzle. Puzzle totally refuses. Jeez, I think I'm going to die again. Puzzle starts scratching the floor with his back leg, preparing himself for his strike. This is the point where Sisters would be putting down plastic on all the furniture if he could get up off it, which of course he can't. Uh, hit Puzzle with Bottle. And I died. Hurting Puzzle would only run contrary to your personal ethics regarding animal abuse. Nothing personal, says Puzzle, which is, more, which is much more shocking than getting mauled to death. Okay, so I died. We're going to restore. Okay, so... I'm going to get to the, where we were quickly. Give me a second. Package. Talk to Igor. Fate. Okay. So it's here. Maybe I worded it wrong. Um, give the whole bottle to Puzzle. Puzzle totally refuses. Open bottle. Okay. Open it. He says for puzzle to sick me huh open the bottle pour bottle you pour some sauce on the floor it settles in nicely puzzle looks you up and down as best he can um feed sauce to puzzle um throw bottle Give it a pretty good heave and it shatters into a zillion pieces. Puzzle starts scratching the floor with his back legs. Yeah, I mean, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to exit. There's no normal exit. Sisters has to let you out. Um, I don't know what 
I'm supposed to do here. He's going to kill me again. Sisters, I sweat you out. What to do? Um, take package. You will never possess this package. Never. Okay. Igor screeches Igor. He starts swatting the air so you can't get close to it. The puzzle sniffs the air and finds fresh items with Worcester sauce upon them. He happily chomps and slops away at the floor. This development has horrified Sisters, as he really didn't have a lot of other defenses. With Puzzle taken care of, you stared down at Sisters, enraged. You sicked Puzzle on me? And you were going to have him eat me? You punch the wall to frighten Sisters, but he's already about to piss himself. Please, Vest, squeal Sisters. Don't kill me. You'd do the same if you were offered the money I got for this job. All right, now we got some talking to do. Talk to Eagle. Well, let's save first. There we go. Okay. Talk to Igor. Let's do the kill. That's too good for you. I ought to force feed you your own goddamn thyroid and let you rot in here. You'll become the out of control chubber fuck who's been who has to wear this shack as a fucking t shirt. Dry cleaning won't be good enough for you, old Igorge. Someone hire out the city's power washer. It's laundry day. I what? No. God damn it, Vest. Just relax for a second. I wasn't going to kill you. I wasn't going to kill anybody. Yeah, you were going to have your little pet incisor monster do it. Give me some fucking answers. Just let me live, Vest. Let me live. I'll tell you all about the job. I promise. I am promising here. There is promising in your future. I am a promise here. All right. Talk to Igor. What is this job you speak of? Answers, you say to him. I was simply tasked with bringing you here and killing you. True. The money for such a thing was outstanding. No, sorry. Astounding. You would well be proud, Vest, my friend. They somehow knew about the vial, the package I wanted you to transport, but they did not appear to want it or need it. They just wanted you deceased. Ordinarily, I would tell them to go to hell. You are a good courier. I have been through many. None good. None at all. Zitzers breathes a little easier. But yes, you may go. I am afraid I cannot pay you, and I cannot allow you to take this vial, this package that contains a vial. Its alien nature is too disarming, even for a clever and forthright individual such as yourself, Vest. I know the rumoring is strong, but this is extraterrestrial in nature. It's true. Talk to Igor. I want to know about the a alien shit. Well, there's much more here than I ever personally believed myself. Our president, he or she, should know. Few others, military men, top scientists. Top, however, they must be top. What you and your little barely accredited community college student folk were on the verge of, Sitzer's door explodes and puzzles. Sitting too close is instantly pulped. You use the distraction to grab the package of alien marrow. Somebody in a grimy trench coat emerges from the flash of light, the stench of the smoke and the burn of both. He throws a half dozen salmon colored posies onto the ground. Everyone falls down. Brick cell. No sensations on the right side of your body, which causes a dull throbbing all its own. You wake up caged and, unlike Haradura, tequila, and a lack of ambition, this is an unfamiliar prison. Dominated by crumbling brick and chipped stone, you're in a boxy square cell with a slab in the northern wall to sleep upon and a hole in the ground to piss in. Time passed since you were at Sisters, that much is certain. You're hungry, but that's not unusual. The last thing you can recall clearly was the stink of tepid shellfish. Bivalves. Whichever. No need to get bogged down in the biology of things. You sort of wish it occurred to you to ask Igor who hired to kill you. Who hired him to kill you, but you honestly didn't consider it until just now. Your vision is still a little foggy, but it seems to be clearing up. Nunez is here. Nunez. Examine Nunez. Your best friend, your business partner, you've seen him almost every day for the last 20 years. Nunez was a big, jovial guy that everyone liked instantly, even though he was a lawyer. He frequently organized your jobs and had the charisma and connections to get you out of any real trouble. Nunez was clearly tortured recently. His eyes have been gouged out of his skull and his face is scabbed over with dried blood, spit, and snot. His clothes are ripped and there are bruises all over his neck. He has been left against the wall of your cell and hunches over in an inhuman manner. You can't even begin to process what has been done to your friend. He is dead. Huh. Search, Nunez. He has a remote control. Take it. 
taken. Oh dear, says a slightly familiar voice that you can't quite place. Is anyone else there? I'm in the other cell. It's just me and a dead Methodist. A pause. I'm ready to align with those bigger and stronger than me. I can provide my identity, fellow prisoner. Okay. Talk to prisoner. Identity. Before speaking, you pray over and over again that the person in the other cell isn't someone you used to work with. Rather than leave it up to some deity, you then attempt to disguise your voice. <coughs> hey, uh, buddy, er, uh, hola, comrade, why not keep talking and I'll... You, I recognize your voice. William Vest of Christmas City, New York. The man that ruined my life. I'm Anheuser Grimlock. Do you remember me? Or Professor Snell, our instructor? There's no way you passed that class. What grade did you end up getting? I failed it. Huh, I should have guessed. What the hell grade did you get? Well, an F2. All right, organic chemistry. Whoever passes that? Organic Chem 2 was practically held in the staff smoking lounge. So what are we doing in this cell? Hmm. I like the guy's Hitler mustache. It's really becoming. Um, let's see. Talk to prisoner cell. Tell me about your cell. I'm sorry if I hit the mic there. Tell me about your cell, you say. This one is, who, uh, say, three meters by three? There's an obviously dead priest, or whatever Methodists call them here. The blood that's all over his outfit is in that shape that also makes up their logo. You hear a slow groan from the far cell. Hang on, perhaps he's all right, says Grimloft. Is that hot sauce? A pause. Vess, never mind. That's toxic tonic all over him, not his own blood. I think we went to school with this bloke as well. Talk to prisoner. Bloke. Who is the other guy over there, you ask Grimloft? He's a moppy redhead, or perhaps that's more of a sauce. Another pause. Get the fuck off of me, exclaims a voice that you know belongs to Lebius Baird, who, sure enough, was in the same chemistry class as you, Nunez, and Grimloft 13 years ago. Vest, I can tell you quite categorically that this is our old classmate, Lebius. You can't respond before Lebius starts in. Vest? William Vest, is that you? He asks. Can you help me? Talk to... Baird, help. I don't know how I can help. The cell looks pretty formidable, Levius. I don't mean to be too forward, man, but you were an enormous fuck-up when we went to college. Presumably all of this is your fault. How is this my fault? I'm locked up too. In fact, as the only American here, this is more insulting to me since we don't put up with this kind of shit. Levius' voice is softer as he speaks to Grimloft. Can you check your pockets? More of a sweatpants gent myself, says Grimloft. Vest, Le said Cause Levius, anything? Uh, talk to Baird. Anything? Yeah, Nunez had a remote control, actually, you tell Levius. I'm going to examine the remote right now. It's a little bigger than a stale wafer bar. It has the usual matrix of functions, like power and such. Hmm. Open it. You can't do that with the remote control. Okay. Um, talk to Baird. No topics. Please enter a topic. Uh, what was it? Anything? He doesn't have anything to say about that. Uh, talk to... What's the other guy's name? Uh, Grimloft. Okay. No. How do I get back? Oh, escape. All right, talk to Grimloft. No topics. Huh. What am I supposed to do here? Okay. Uh, open cell. Uh, use remote. You're not supposed to say you'd be a little more specific. Um, hit power. Venting of restrictions on the power button won't accomplish much. Turn on TV. All right, see now, uh, there wasn't a TV described. Um, I kind of remembered that from, like just now, from when I played it, like a couple years ago. Um, so, you know, it's a TV that's like kind of outside the cells down the end of the hall. I, I don't remember exactly how I'm supposed to like, you know, I guess uh, arrive at that, but I just kind of hit turn on TV and it worked. So I just kind of, you know, I guess score one for having played it before. The TV shows Nunez in front of an interrogation table. There is a strong light at the top of the screen. The camera is apparently mounted from the ceiling. 
the video is grainy and in black and white. Through the resolu though the resolution is terrible, you can tell that Nunez just told a joke that bombed. He's doing a comedic pause, Jack Benny inspired. That is part of his social repertoire when a joke doesn't go over particularly well. Why would they leave us a tape of what Nunez went through? Asks Grimloft. Hmm. I guess I'll just keep watching. Watch TV. Uh, television continues to play. The interrogator enters the camera's view as he hunches over the desk to admonish Nunez. The interrogator is wearing a black hooded coat. He is pointing at Nunez, berating him, accentuating several words with a pointed finger. Hmm. I guess we'll just keep watching. The man asking the question stops his pointing. Nunez apparently says something else sharp. The interrogator does not move for several seconds. Keep watching. Other guards are called in. They slap Nunez a bit. One punches him in the solar plexus, but before Nunez is properly stunned, you see him lift the remote control from the table. Huh. Good for Nunez. Watch TV. The guards hold Nunez up. The interrogator comes onto the other side of the table and blocks view. Nunez doesn't move for a bit, and th but then engages in a violent spasm. The interrogator throws aside two objects, presumably Nunez's eyes. Ooh. Watch TV. Nunez is dragged out of the cell, presumably straight to your cell where he died. The tape goes all fuzzy and there's nothing left on the recording. What else is on? Asked Grimloft. Yeah, I've seen, uh, I've seen that show before. All right. Um, I guess watch TV, see what happens. <laughs> the TV is on, but it's not displaying anything other than a black screen. A door opens from the top of the staircase. Back of the cell, says a deep voice. You can't place the accent. The author, the author of said voice has no way to tell if you or the other guys have actually moved to the back of the cells. He doesn't seem to care much. You can hear, and more to the point, feel a slow and steady crump as the figure drags down a body over the stairs. The figure is wearing a dark hooded coat, shrouding the features of his face. The only bit that you can see clearly are the wrists, gnarled, dingy, graying flesh that flakes off little scales. The figure heaves a wizened and crackling old body onto the corridor. The TV tips but doesn't fall over. With a satisfied snirk, the figure plods back up the stairs and into the darkness. You fail to hear the door shut. Examine body. You recognize the body as that of an old professor. Snell, his name was. He was ancient when you had him for organic chemistry, and while the years may have been kind to him, the last few minutes were brutal. He lies in a crumpled heap, twisted grotesquely, He's wearing turquoise robes he always used to teach in, though they are now caked with dried splotches of blood and grime. I'm going to save here. And take a break. I'll see you in part three.